Nothing ruins a bike ride like a flat tire. Welcome to Bikeberry. Today we'll be teaching you how to replace a tire and inner tube on a Gigabike groove, getting you back on the road for more fun. Depending on which wheel you'll need to fix will determine what tools you'll need to use. But for either wheel, you'll need tire levers, a bike pump, and a pressure gauge. For the front wheel, you'll need a 12mm socket and ratchet, a 14mm socket with a second ratchet, or a 14mm wrench. For the back wheel, you'll need a 10mm deep socket or a 10mm wrench, a 5mm Allen wrench, also known as a hex key, a 21mm wrench or large adjustable wrench, cable ties, and your preferred cutting tool for cutting these cable ties. I'd recommend having a container handy to collect loose screws and other small parts. And of course, you'll need your replacement tire or inner tube. Let's start by taking the weight off the wheel you'll be working on. The rear wheel can be raised by using the built-in tender stand, and shifting the weight over the back end will raise the front wheel. The front wheel can easily be taken off by using a 12mm socket and ratchet to undo the axle, and a 14mm socket with a second ratchet or a 14mm wrench to hold the nut as we undo the axle. Now that the axle and nut are undone, hold the wheel and carefully slide the axle out of the wheel hub making sure to catch the spacers as they come loose. Once the axle is pulled all the way out, the front wheel should easily slide off the fork. Taking off the back wheel will be a few more steps than taking off the front wheel. Start by undoing the rear fender and side panels. The fender is attached by six 5mm Allen screws, also known as hex screws. The side panels are each attached by a single 10mm screw. Once these are off, we'll have access to the remaining screws. Undo the adjusting knot on the brake rod. This should be loose enough to unthread by hand. Pull out the brake rod, catching the spring and other accessories as they come loose. Undo the 10mm screw which supports the brake drum. Now that the brake components are undone, use a 10mm wrench or deep socket to loosen the chain tensioners. Use a 21mm wrench or an adjustable wrench to loosen the lock nuts and axle nuts on the back wheel. If you're struggling to undo these nuts, Use a soft mallet to tap on the wrench. Check for slack on the electric wiring that connects to the rear wheel's engine. If there is not enough slack to remove the wheel completely, follow the wires and cut the cable ties along the way until there's a sufficient amount of slack to remove the wheel. Before attempting to remove the wheel from the horizontal dropouts, remove the chain from both the drive sprocket and the rear sprocket, clearing it away from the wheel's path off the dropouts. Now that your wheel is free, we can start to remove the tire from the rim. Relieve any air pressure that may still be in the inner tube by depressing the plunger in the valve. Now that the tire is deflated, press both sides of the tire towards the center of the rim, separating the bead of the tire away from the rim's sidewall. Use a tire lever and slide the hooked end in between the lip of the rim and the tire bead, lifting the bead out and over the rim. If the tire lever is loose enough, slide the lever along the rim lifting the rest of the tire out and over the rim. If it is still a tight fit, use a second lever, lifting another section of the tire. Continue until the tire lever easily slides around the rim, lifting the bead completely over the rim. If there's enough room, the tube can now be pulled out. If there isn't enough room, the tube should come out when removing the rest of the tire. Now, you can completely remove the tire from the rim. Now that the tire and tube are completely removed, inspecting the rim can be done by looking closely all along the inside of the rim and carefully feeling for debris and anything else that could damage the inner tube. The same process can be applied to inspect the inner wall of the tire. When inspecting the tube, overinflate it slightly to make any perforations more noticeable. At this point, we can grab the new tire or tube or begin to patch the existing tube. Once we're ready to put the wheel back together, we can start by placing the tube inside the tire and seating it so it evenly fills the tire. Search the outside tire walls for any arrows or prints specifying the direction of wheel rotation. Begin placing the tire and tube on the rim by aligning the valve and the valve hole. Make sure it does not protrude out in an angle. Slip the bead off one side of the tire back onto the rim. This should be loose enough that no tools are needed. Now that half the tire is on, check to see that the tube is properly seated inside the tire and not protruding out of the body. To finish off the rest of the tire, we'll start by the valve 
and push the bead inside of the rim. To finish the last part of the bead, slide a tire lever in between the tire and rim, lifting it outwards, forcing the bead inside of the rim. If it is still too tight for one lever, try a second lever for more leverage. Now that the tire is completely on, massage the tire one more time, ensuring everything is seated properly. Inflate the tire to the manufacturer's specified PSI and begin the wheel installation. If the front wheel is being reinstalled, align the wheel hub with the eyelet and slide the axle rod part way. Add the spacers and washers along the way as you insert the axle rod into the wheel's hub. Use your 12mm tool and 14mm tool to tighten the nut and axle rod to the fork. If the back wheel is being installed, slide the axle rod into the dropout and hand tighten the axle nuts. Place the chain on the rear sprocket, aligning it with the drive sprocket, using the pedals to pull the chain fully on. Tighten the chain tensioners just enough to take out some of the slack in the chain. Now you can fully tighten the axle nuts and lock nuts. Screw the brake drum back onto its bracket and reconnect the brake rod. Insert the rod along its guides and place the components back along the way. Tighten the adjusting knot, periodically squeezing the brake lever to feel the tension. If you haven't already done so, use the zip ties to manage any loose cables. Reinstall the fender and side panels to complete the bike. Congratulations! You're all set for more adventures on your Gigabike. If you're interested in purchasing a Gigabike or any parts, check the link in the bio. If you're interested in learning more about electric bikes, check out our other videos and reviews. Thanks for watching and enjoy the ride!